What's cooking, Juventus fans? Welcome back to the Old Lay's favorite YouTube channel. And we've got some stuff to talk about. Uh, first up, we have we have uh, Benton Kerr. He sustained an injury while overseas in South America. I'm sure that's not going to ruffle any feathers uh, for those that are anti-international uh, break. Um, yeah, international break going on. Uh, we've got a new defensive a name uh, for Juventus to potentially be targeting in the next Mercado. Yeah, we're back to tar- talking Mercado. We had about a uh, half a week off from that, but we're back to it. And then we've got McKinney. Um, was suspended from the U.S. men's national team uh, yesterday for the match against uh, Canada. We'll talk about what's going on with that and what whole situation um, ended up happening with the uh, American player. Stick with us. We'll fill you in now. Ciao, ragazzi. Welcome back. You're in the Beyond Canary Zone. My name is Justin Sofro. Today is Monday, September 6, 2021. Uh, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, hit that bell icon to stay notified for all of our latest videos. Uh, we appreciate our our, um, our community continues to grow, and we appreciate uh, the, the uh, reach outreach from all of you and getting to know each and every one of you and your stories as how you became Juventus fans. Or like I said, if you're not a Juventus fan, go ahead and leave a comment down below as well so we know how you got here. Anyway, let's just j- dive into it because we got a lot to talk about very first news of the day that we have is right here is involves uh rodrigo bentinker and that is um actually this is just news i was reported so there's no real source for it uh but bentinker was subbed off because if you watched the match you saw it <laughs> uh bentinker was subbed off again with an injury to a delicate area during uruguay's friendly against bolivia um he only played, I think he played 70 minutes uh, before he was taken off um, against the uh, World Cup qualifier. I think it was against Peru. Uh, but then he was subbed off with a uh, injury that he sustained. <sighs> he played about half the match. Um, it's Here's the thing. Here, and I'm not going to talk about this too long, but I wanted to hear your all's opinions. More than anything, than me giving my opinion, which is what we do here. You don't care, but I'm going to give you my opinion. But I want to hear your all's opinions on this. Um especially with the midfield situation of what Juventus has. Uh, it's worrisome that Bendinger could be injured and be out for a long period of time um, when we don't have a lot of uh, great play from the mids, except for Locatelli, who I will get into and say, if Locatelli's not starting after that performance yesterday for Italy, though Italy failed to score, um, you know, if, if he doesn't play, I don't know what's going on. Max Allegri and I need to have a talk, if, if that's the case. Um, anyway, just what are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts about the injury um, that he sustained? We'll see how long, if he is out for any time, any significant period of time. But it is something to worry about whenever you have a, uh, a lackluster midfield to begin with. But anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the next topic of the day. And that's about Dybala. And it's meetings on meetings on meetings. You know what I'm saying. Uh, Nicolo Shira is saying that last Juventus bid uh, to Paula Dybala uh, to extend the contract was 8.5 million euros a year plus a bonus of 1 million euros until 2025. Aloya would like 10 million plus 2 million bonuses, uh, 2 million, 10 million euros plus 2 to get, to, to get to the 12, the number we talked about a lot. Um, let's see, until 2026, talks are ongoing and scheduled a new meeting within the end of September to try to reach an agreement. Again, I know we talked about it yesterday, uh, that potentially the wage bill um, issue with them trying to save money could potentially um, cause some big issues when it comes to the renewal of Dybala and what, what happens for the uh, the Argentinian player going forward. Um, that's the latest that we have right now. Again, there'll be meetings, and don't worry, there'll be more meetings coming forward, um, I'm sure, into September, probably into October as well. Let's move on to the next one we got, and that is, um, well, Cordia de la Sport is talking about the Juventus goalkeeping uh, situation. Basically just saying kind of something we talked about. I think I've talked about it plenty of times on the lives with Julian and said that. Uh, basically saying that the Juventus goalkeeping woes continue. Juventus have not had a clean sheet and, uh, since Juve Spezia was 3-0 on March 2nd of this year. So, <laughs> un. I don't want to say ungodly, but a ridiculous amount of time. Uh, the Tech has given up a goal over and over and over and over again. Um, the goalkeeping situation is a problem. Uh, we had a chance to rectify it this summer. Juventus failed to do it, and they didn't even pursue it. Um, you know how you know my feelings on that. Um, I'm sure a lot of you probably uh, have. If you had, didn't agree with me before, maybe you're coming to my side a little bit now that you see uh, the struggles that we're dealing with, and that the goalkeeping problem, uh, the goalkeeper in general, is a problem. But Tech did have comments to say, and uh, Chesney said, uh, One of my strengths has always been to shy away from judgments, whether positive or negative. Often these two extremes are exaggerated, and the truth lies somewhere in the middle. So I'm glad to see somebody can be so calm 
and have no worries. <laughs> but I mean, also, again, what is he going to say? He's the goalkeeper. Um, if he didn't say that, if he said that, you know, he's pissed off because people were making comments about him or he was upset about whoever, you know, or if he just said that, I'm happy with it. What are you going to say? You know what I mean? At the same time, there's only so much he can really say, um, you know, I guess maybe some people would want him to maybe voice a little bit more frustration be like, you know, I've got to pick up my play. It's really has not been uh, what you've been caliber right now. I need to, you know, uh, it's not what I expect for myself. I, what I expect going forward, I expect to do better, you know, something along those lines, but really what all can he say again, just me being a petulant child, being frustrated about uh, not having Donnarumma here, um, you know, right now. Let's move on. We also have another new name, uh, La Provence, in uh, I think it's a French uh, source, um, so take it for what it's worth. I said that Juventus are inquiring about Boubacar Kamada, the central uh, defender of Olympique uh, Marseille. So it's an interesting name. It's a player that uh, he's young. He's 21 years old. Um, don't I don't have a ton of information. Let's not kid ourselves. I only know so much about this kid. But what I do know is that he's a young kid, 21. He's French. Um, he's a central, so he can, it, it seems that they're able to use him to switch between a central, def, um, like a, a center back. And then also with a, a defensive mid midfield, um, play as well. So that's kind of interesting to use going forward. We'll see. Um, but look into him a little bit. When I say look into him, I mean, if this is something that interests you, let me know your thoughts on the player. I've looked a little bit. I like him. He seems solid. Um, from what I've heard, it appears that he is a uh, Marseille's best player right now. He's a young player, um, which is always good, but also what are your thoughts on the player going forward? We'll see it. I like, I always like to say is I don't go too much into it when it first gets flowed out there. And when it starts, if it starts repeating, then we'll talk about it. But for right now, that's just a new name to keep an eye on. Maybe if you're watching any of uh, League One or League One, uh, let us know, um, you know, your thoughts on the player going forward. And then let's see what we got here. Now we've got the uh, main topic of the day. And it's a it's a bit of a doozy. Um, not the one I'm most excited about because we have a lot of, um, um, not really a lot. It's just kind of a issue going on with the player over through the summer uh, where they talk about if Juventus were wanting to sell him or keep him or whatever have you. And that's the issue with Weston McKinney. Um, and this is more of a delicate issue. I think it's also something where two sides can be um, very strong in what they want to say. But here's what it is. Juventus, uh, this is Daily Mail UK, so the source. But at the same time, it is a thing that happened and we can talk about it going forward. Uh, Daily Mail UK is saying Juventus are not happy with McKinney's uh, off-the-field behavior. Uh, I think that's a B2F. Uh, off-the-field behavior in yesterday's incident did not help Juventus. Uh, did not help. Juventus are willing to sell in January if a good offer comes in. Um, okay. So, I don't know what to take from this. It may be trash reporting. You never know. It's always something like that. Some rumors are going to get floated out there, especially when you have a player like Weston McKinney, who's an American playing for an Italian team. Um, there likes to be a little bit of um, consternation going on there. I think a lot of people try to build that up. And then also there's a little bit of uh, Daily Mail UK is in obviously the United Kingdom. And there's some interest potentially from some of those teams. Uh, Patitici may be going, uh, looking into him as well, bringing him to uh, Tottenham. So there could be some of that interest there. Maybe that's why they're trying to maybe see about him being sold. But what I want to get into is the issue that really happened. Because there was a lot of talk about um, over the last, I don't know, the last couple weeks of the Mercado. There were talks about, you know, uh, Allegri doesn't see him as being a part of the squad. Allegri wants to move him. Allegri's not happy with him. He's always been a constant issue. He's always out of shape or whatever. Fat McKinney, what do you want to call him? Like he's always eating. He never stops. None of this stuff has really floated out there before. There was the game. Okay, and I will acknowledge there was a small issue, or not small, but there was an issue with, um, you know, uh, protocol when it came to the pandemic situation of not handling that properly and not doing that well before he and I think Dybala, a couple other players got got into um, got into trouble because of that. So that happened. What happened here is not the same. Now, let's get into that now uh, for people that were going ahead and people were already trying to jump in and crush McKinney uh, because of the situation that happened with him. Let's go ahead and just jump into that. So first of all, uh, let's go ahead. Where is that new story? There it is. Um, here it is. Mi uh, Mirko Nicolina uh, was saying that McKinney, what happened was, so the reason that he was suspended for the U U U.S. men's national team versus Canada was because McKinney gets off the bus without a mask and unlike his teammates, stops for some autographs. This would be the violation dating back to a few days ago for which the midfielder has been punished by the U.S. coach. 
So we have a picture of it as well. I can throw up right on there. It's a small picture. It's a little bit blurry, but there you have it. Um, you can find it on our Twitter account, wherever have you on. I think uh, Mirko also tweeted it out himself. You can look it up yourself if you want to find it. Basically, it was just a very simple. He got off the bus. And so he's being crushed for basically being a good guy and stopping two fans to see us, you know, American fans that are there for him and, uh, you know, taking pictures or whatever he did, signing autographs or whatever have you. Um, first, okay. I do want to come clear and say this, if that is your protocol and you're told not to stop and you're not, not to do anything like that, you probably should have not stopped. You probably should have kept going and you probably should also have a mask on, but the one thing I will say though, it's a little bit different. I understand millions of dollars come into play when it comes to this. You play for Juventus. Um, the rules in, in America are a bit different than the rules, say, for Juventus in Italy. I live in America. I can tell you right now, nobody wears masks. <laughs> like for the most part, we're not wearing masks anymore. It's over. We're, we're, I mean, not that it's over, but there's still, yeah, there's talks about, you know, it resurging and coming back, but like, we go out daily and I'm not, and this is not trying to be a political thing. I'm not saying what my personal opinion is on it um, overall when it comes to wearing a mask or not wearing a mask or, or, you know, vaccinations or any of that nonsense. I'm not getting into that. I'm not doing the politics thing here, but what I will say just from observation, I go around America, movie theaters are open. People are hanging out in movie theaters. Um, if you watch, um, if you watch American football, Literally, college football started this weekend. Uh, Labor Day weekend's a big weekend for that in the United States. I'm excited. My team plays tonight. Uh, probably going to get beat. <laughs> but anyway, my team plays tonight. And the um, overall, it's a... It, you watch If you watch any of those games, they're on ESPN. I'm pretty sure they're, do, they're played all over the world. So you could have watched it. Literally, those stadiums are packed with people. Not wearing masks all over each other. Drinking beer, doing whatever. I'm not saying it's, it's right. But what I'm saying is that's just what it is here. So it's a little bit odd um, to try to enforce this with the player and be like, hey, you know, you can't just even walk up to a guy and sign an autograph for him kind of thing. Um, again, if he's told not to do it, that's on him. That is, again, a violation of his fault. And he uh, suffered the consequences, which he did by being suspended for that match. Is it anything more than that? I don't think so. I don't think it should be. Um, if people really want to make it something, they can. But it, this isn't a kid who's flagrantly causing issues overall. If you don't like his play, that is fine. You can absolutely say that he's not the best player that Juventus has. I would never argue that he's the best player that Juventus has. He looked very confused and he looked poor when he was playing. Um, what was it? The first was it? Um, was it? Empoli or was it the other match? Sorry, it's it feels like it's been forever. <laughs> anyway, I guess maybe it was Udinese. I can't remember if it was Empoli or Udinese. Whatever it was, he looked confused. He looked out of sorts. He was not really good to be used. Almost in like a trident formation is I think how they used him, or they just played him up more up front, place where he wasn't really comfortable. Whatever have you. He did not play well. So anyway, I don't want to touch on this too much, but basically those are just my opinions overall. Um Yes, I think you can scrutinize him. Yes, I think you can crush him if you want. But what I'm saying is I just don't. I personally, my personal matters on this thing is I feel like a lot, a lot to do is, be, is being made of really nothing for the most part. Anyway, that's what it is. The protocol is protocol. But my, my main argument was just it's a little bit different here. <laughs> it is a little bit different here now, um, whether that's correct or not. You know. All right. Let's move on to the next topic of the day, and that would be um, actually the final topic of the day, and that is Sheffrin, our favorite guy in the UEFA, is talking was talking today, and basically said uh, talking about financial fair play, and he said we do not allow irresponsible behavior. FFP must move towards a stronger system that allows direct control and financial responsibility, a system that stabilizes football. We will go ahead with our strategy and give clubs the opportunity to play more matches. And then he also said. We have to be united in the face of this of this misfortune called the Super League. This guy, this guy is so full of himself. I can't. I, I really can't. Uh, hoping that it could have just uh, been just an episode. We don't want to experience this situation again. We have to be a model for football and stay together as one big family. Of course, he wants to protect. He wants to protect his money. He wants to protect his well being. All the money that he's stashing in his pockets. He doesn't want for everybody else. He doesn't want you know things to even the table overall. He doesn't want the guys who are really bringing the money to um, to the scene to really um, you know benefit off it as much as they should as they could as juventus could you know like i said before i was a little bit iffy when it came to the uh, super league situation um but 
one thing I will say is, you know, you look at, you're sitting over here and you're looking at the way financial fair play is being handled, uh, which is not at all when it comes to teams like PSG, Man City or whatever, who just able to throw around all the money they want by whoever without any consequence. Will consequences come? We'll see. But as it stands right now, there haven't been any consequences. They're able to load up on top talent. And uh, if they don't win the, uh, if, if, if PSG do not win um, the Champions League this year, I think they should be crushed. Absolutely, they should. So anyway, as it stands right now, that's what it is with fair, financial fair play. Um, the ongoings with it. I'm not a big fan of Sheffrin, obviously, but those are his statements. And overall, one thing that I would say is I'm I'm now leaning pro Super League mainly because give us all that money. That way Juventus can buy the players that they need um, without issue going forward, especially when you see how um, – even now, even with the addition of Logatelli, how much more help they need when it comes to the midfield and stuff like that, that other teams are able to easily, um, you know, cover. Anyway, that's all I really have for you today. Let me know your thoughts on all the opinions I listed today and the different news stories going on. Uh, let me know your opinions on McKinney. I'm sure a lot of you will. I'm sure a lot of you will also let me know um, about the different players and the pronunciations that I did wrong. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate you tuning in today. Uh, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you're new here, and also hit that bell icon to stay notified for all of our latest videos. Make sure you follow Beyond Canary Zone at Beyond Canary Zone on Twitter and Instagram. Follow me at Justin Sofer on Twitter, and follow Julian Genoti at Genoti151 on Twitter as well. Forza Juve, Forza Bianconeri.